Hello and welcome to Tolmax Video Guide on how to complete a basic configuration for the ACS drive. To complete a basic configuration, you must first download the latest TMI from www.tolomatic.com. It's easy to find the latest version by typing in TMI in the search window and downloading the most recent file. To configure the ACS drive, you must configure the drive, actuator, motor, mode select, I.O., fault, safety limits, home setup, and mode setup configuration tabs. Let's walk through the process. Once you have the Tollmatic Motion Interface or TMI installed on your computer, when you launch TMI you will see the drive selection screen or it will automatically connect. As long as there's not a firmware mismatch and the drive has electrical power, a connection will be established. The drive information will be displayed on the right hand side of the page. If there is a firmware mismatch, please consult the ACS manual or watch a How to Upgrade ACS Firmware video. The first time connecting to the drive, you'll be prompted to select the units. Because TMI simplifies motion by automatically converting motor revolutions to linear travel distance, this is an important step. The choices are US Linear, SI Linear, US Rotary or SI Rotary. It is recommended that you choose units you are most familiar with to accomplish your application goals. Next, click on the Actuator tab to define the mechanics of the application. When the ACS is used to drive a Tollmatic actuator, the configuration string or ordering part number of the actuator is used to define these mechanics in TMI. This configuration string is found on the label of every Tollmatic actuator. Simply from the drop down menu, select the model, the size, the particular screw or belt used, the stroke in inches or metric depending on your part number. You enter the stroke, mounting inline or reverse parallel with reduction or not, and then select the motor you're currently configured with the drive. This provides all the mechanical information needed for the drive to know its hard limits. We can now move on to defining the motor. When the motor information is entered from the configuration string on the actuator tab, all necessary parameters are automatically loaded into the motor tab. The drive is aware of the motor and no additional configuration is required. In the case of an integrated motor, Upon connecting to the integrated drive, the motor information is already pre-selected. If a motor change is required, another motor model can be selected from the drop-down menu, and the motor information will automatically be populated as well. Some Tollmatic motors come configured with a gearbox, brake, or both. This information is then the motor model, and if a brake or gearbox is present, the specifications will automatically be updated. Next, the Mode Select tab defines how the ACS drive will be controlled. The selections are Index Move, Analog Control, Pneumatic, or Ethernet IP, or Modbus TCP, depending on your firmware. Index Move allows for up to 16 move con commands controlled with digital inputs. In the case of the integrated ACS, it only allows four move input commands based on two inputs. Analog control can be configured with voltage or current. Voltage is 0 to 10 volts or current is 4 to 20 milliamps for position or velocity control. When selecting pneumatic mode, a warning will automatically popping up informing you that the actuator will home on power up and automatically be enabled. Pneumatic mode can be set up for spring mode, two position, two input, three position, two input, or three position, three input. For Ethernet modes, you select Ethernet IP or Modbus TCP and will put the drive in Ethernet mode. In the case of Ethernet IP, add-on profiles are available 
also known as keyed EDS file, and a wide variety of add-on instructions. This makes it very easy to set up and run with the Rockwell R's Logics platform, or also known as the Rockwell Integrated Architecture. The I.O. tab of TMI is used to assign digital inputs to functionalities of the drive. The digital input functionalities can be defined as Enable, Start Motion, Home, Software Stop, Stop Motion, Negative Limit Switch, Positive Limit Switch, or Move Select 1 and 2. The digital outputs can be signed for Zone, Motion Complete, Home Complete, Fault, or Break. You can also enable the Break Output Control in this section. You're able to adjust the response delay of Disable and Enable, as well as the maximum break delay and maximum break velocity. You can also choose if you want to have it active low or active high. The digital input control section allows you to adjust the debouncing, which is how fast the drive will detect change in states of inputs. The fault tab allows the user to enable and disable safety faults to determine what the appropriate response to the fault should be. Safety faults include positive and negative limits, software stop, position error, velocity error, and I squared T limits. The I squared T limit is designed to prevent damage to the drive and motor by ensuring the average application torque is being below the continuous motor capabilities. The drive can be configured to stop motion or disable the motor for the position error and velocity error faults. These faults are in place to protect the system from critical misuse and are displayed for user information only. Next, the Safety Limits tab is used to configure safety limits of the system. This allows the user to configure parameters for in position, position and velocity errors, current limits and velocity XL decel limits, as well as positive and negative software limits. In position and settle time set the parameters for the in position bit. A move must be within in position window for the amount of time before the move is complete. Force move settle time sets the amount of time the force must be reached before the move is complete. Parameters like max velocity, max XLD cell, positive negative software limits define max motion profile parameters which the motion tolmatic motion interface will allow on the home and mode setup page. If a user wishes to restrict velocity or position, they can do so with these parameters. Current limits are loaded automatically in by the motor selection, but a user can lower them if they so wish to limit the force or keep the motor cooler. Peak current duration can be adjusted to allow for longer or shorter peak motor durations based on the application needs. I squared T is automatically adjusted based on this parameter. Finally, the zone bounds are what defines the zone output and would be on or off. This parameter is only seen when the IO zone output is configured. Some of these parameters are only available on ACS servo drives or ACS integrated drives. The ACS stepper uses a different motor technology making velocity error, eco mode, and zone output unavailable. Lastly, the home setup tab is used to configure the homing routine. Every home routine has a configurable motion profile, velocity, XL decel, force, and the choice of direction you wish to home the actuator. There's also an offset from the homing position that your actuator will travel to as the new zero position once the hard stop is found. Additionally, there is an automatic home on power up option that you can select. 
Homing can be set up to hard stop, limit switches, or in the case of the ACS configured as a rotary actuator, you can home to an index pulse as long as it's an ACS servo or ACS integrated servo drive. It is recommended the force be set to 10 to 30 percent and the homing routine completed at a slow operation to help prevent damage to the actuator and the motor. Once the home routine is set up, that completes the basic configuration and the selected mode will be required to set up for the index mode, analog position mode, pneumatic mode, or ethernet mode. Please see Tolmatic's other how-to videos for greater detail on these various modes. Thank you for watching.